fellow Americans, what I will tell you is that I read student development theory and have a better understanding of it. I will also tell you that I could use more work. Thank you, TJ. I'll take it from here. So, um, we're talking about Perry's model with dualism, multiplicity, and rel relativism, and commitment to relativism. 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 We're talking about the commitment to relativism. And uh, Perry's model is a cognitive and ethical model. And so for a little bit of understanding, uh, this whole entire uh, reading, as uh, Tyrone has said, was very oriented towards the faculty or the instructor. Um, and we could apply it in student affairs, and that's what Tyrone's challenge was to us, is to apply it to uh, a, a, as a role as a student affair professional. Um, so I'm going to stick with what I know a little bit here. Uh, I mean, I could talk about admissions and whatnot. Um, I, I, I guess I could. Uh, but housing is really the very obvious route to go here for me. Um, and for many people, I'd see, I, I think it'd be easier. Um, and dualism, it talks about knowledge coming from authorities. And uh, this is where the student recognizes that. Uh, if we apply that to the students that live in housing, they realize that there are some things being said from outside sources that are authorities, and there's things being said from inside authorities, such as myself. Um, and they get the conflicting analysis and start to wonder, well, which is right? What is, what, which one is right? Is there a right answer? Um, and it starts to push them into the next level of cognitive uh, development for Perry, and that is multiplicity. And that's when uh, students start thinking about, well, okay, so there's a bunch of different opinions on this. Um, maybe there is no one right answer. Maybe there is multiple ways of viewing this. And I think of it when it comes to like a roommate conflict that I've had to deal with uh, multiple times. Um, student comes into my office and they're like, hey, I got this problem with such and such. Um, really, it's not working out between us. We have different sleep schedules. Uh, we just don't talk to each other. Um, and so I challenge them and I'm like, so are you causing this issue as well? What, what role do you play in this? What, what, what are you contributing to this? It's all about, I've heard a lot about what exactly they're doing, but what about you? And so long story short, we end up sitting down and coming to an agreement and then they start realizing that in multiplicity that everybody's open to their opinions and ideas and essentially no one person is right in that situation no one person is wrong but that's kind of the idea of uh multiplicity so now we're moving into the uh relativism relativism rather um and this one's a little bit more complex uh they start to understand students start to understand that some opinions and beliefs and ideas are more defendable, uh, as Perry says, as I'm paraphrasing, um, more defendable than others. And uh, essentially what that means is like, hey, you stole my hair dryer is pretty defendable because your hair dryer is stolen and it was in your roommate's side of the room. Um, whereas, hey, I think you're weird or I think that I just don't like you is not really a defendable argument unless you have proof or reasons to back it up. Um, and sure, this is a lot more about like developing as a human being than it is as a intelligence type deal, maybe emotional intelligence if you want to go that route. Um, so really, as a student affairs professional, we can facilitate the idea that everybody is different from you and that no one person is going to agree with exactly what you say. Um, and we can do this through different ways. We can do this through programming. We can do this through... Uh, one-on-one -on -one conversations, which are really time-consuming but very beneficial. Um, we could do this through, uh, you know, we could have like little seminars. Uh, but really, the most impactful way that I've experienced, uh, at least going through these functions, are through conversations, one-on-one uh, -on -one talks, uh, mediations. They have all been very helpful with showing students these more critical thinking, more abstract thinking. Uh, the more developed thinking. Um, and the last one for Perry's model is uh, commitment to relativism. And I struggle with the idea of thinking that we can bring um, students to this level. Um, as the author noted, it was controversial. And I can kind of agree. Um, after reading Keegan's model, I don't know if I necessarily agree with the commitment to relativism. Um, and basically, the reason I state that is if 
the commitment to relativism is committing to the ideas and beliefs and some things that are very solid and ingrained into you. Um, but when I was going through Keegan's model, um, that was towards the end of it. They had a different stage that they referenced. Keegan's fifth know. order of consciousness um, directly to me directly relates to Perry's uh, commitment to relativism, and uh, I tend to agree a little bit more with Keegan's uh, model in general. So I have a little bit of a biasy towards this, but um, in this model, uh, in this order of consciousness that Keegan has talks about there's different ways of organizing reality and putting them into frames and this is their viewpoint so essentially beliefs and ingrained set things but he argues that this doesn't happen before the age of 40 uh, if it happens at all and in Perry's model it makes it seem like at some point in your life you're going to have these set beliefs and ingrained um, and that's very true and it's very possible some people have beliefs that are impossible to change but the argument is can Myself, as a student affairs professional, a student affairs professional, affect this. Uh, I don't think we can. I don't think that mm -hmm. we can help a student come to a commitment to a belief. I think, let me phrase. I think that we can build, we can lay the groundwork for them. We can get them through the first of the duality, in which they, you know, typically are already past that at this level. At least I assume most people I've interacted with in their first years pretty much understand that there's right, wrong but there's also multiple different answers. So we really get them at the level of probably more like relativism. They're already starting to get their ideas set. Um, they're starting to understand things in complex ways. Um, but do they commit to certain beliefs? Some people have those already in certain areas. Some people don't. Um, so can we affect that? Yes, to an extent. Um, I feel as though that we can do a little bit to lay the groundwork for them. We could... Uh, support with programs, we could uh, challenge their thoughts, support their thoughts, and do things around that nature, but can we really give them their ingrained beliefs that they, or change their ingrained beliefs? I, I, I struggle with that idea. Um, beliefs are a very th hard, a very difficult thing to change. Um, it takes a lot of conditioning, a lot of reprogramming of thoughts and processes. So um, as a student affairs professional, I don't think that's likely. Um, I could be completely wrong. You could challenge me on that. Feel free. Um, but from my understanding with the combination of Keegan's model, it doesn't seem very likely at this level. Um, it also requires us to have, as student affairs professionals, set beliefs 100% solid to be able to talk passionately enough about certain things to instill that into our students. Um, so time's running short. Uh, seven minutes is not a whole lot as I didn't, I didn't think that'd be an issue. Um, so this is what I've got for this one. Expect something more funny next time. Uh, also, this is just water. It's just a fancy glass. Um, and you stay classy, Valdos. Stay